Let's get your ideas about both of those globally and how China and its reopening will affect both of them. Well, thanks for having me on. Uh, you know, on one level, it seems to me pretty straightforward, just like um, we saw virtually anywhere in the developed or developing world, a country that came out of an aggressive lockdown had a huge cyclical recovery. So whatever China's long-term problems are, uh, and obviously there's quite a few challenges, um, something else would have to go really badly wrong in order to stop uh, a very large bounce very quickly. And from what I can see, not that I'm in the business the same way I used to be, from for any, any bit of evidence I see, it's pretty obvious China's bouncing back already. J just even so here in London, somewhere as distant, you know, you can see evidence of Chinese tourists all over the centre of London already. Um, and you can see it in their own spending habits and all the rest of it. So, so China's comeback you know, So China's comeback is certainly going to help growth globally uh, and mm -hmm, in individual mm -hmm. countries. Is it going to hurt inflation, however, through pressure on commodity prices or oil consumption or whatever? So that's the obvious thing one would uh, worry about, given the historic role China's played over the past 30 years increasingly in, in many commodities and, of course, everything else. But what I find absolutely fascinating is despite uh, this now being a month-old story, uh, commodity prices have not risen. Um, so either the commodity markets are being really blind or there's something else going on. And uh, I find myself... Uh, leaning towards the slightly more optimistic angle of that, and the, partly because of uh, when I, I did a PhD way back, decades, if not centuries ago, during <laughs> the second oil price crisis, and, and what uh, economists would call the long-term elasticities, uh, I found out before I'd finished my PhD. Conventional wisdom was just so wrong on, in that when you get a huge price shock... Consumers and producers uh, actually go through the process of responding more than people realize. And so it might well be that below the surface, that's going on in the energy markets uh, right now. Uh, and you can see it, obviously, with European gas prices, where uh, they're actually fallen so far from the highs. And we see it with some evidence of the European economy, too. So it might. And, and the other thing that is possible is that this this bounce from China isn't going to be involving the same kind of frenetic activity in things like house building that it did in past cycles. So, but I, I, I'm slightly surprised. I would have thought by now we would have seen a bigger influence in commodity prices, mm -hmm. and it's not happened. So, Jim, it's I... not happened not happened yet. Why isn't it happening? Or, or does that tell us something? I mean, it's not out of the question that the global economy could be going into recession as soon as this year. So I do wonder if that's the signal that we're getting is even with China's reopening priced in, even with that activity coming, if the U.S. is slowing sharply, I don't know, you tell me what's going on in Europe, but that there's, there, that there's a bigger headwind out there than many realize. Well, I, I don't really, I mean, that obviously would be uh, a possibility. And uh, that's probably what the consensus were thinking in November. But again, my, my latest, I, I emphasize I'm not in the business day to day in the same kind of crazy intensity I was for 30 years, but it's still in my blood. And so if I look at all the high frequency indicators that are pretty reliable, actually the evidence of uh, in Europe is partly linked to the gas prices, but also because exports to China are so important. The, the evidence coming out of Europe is there is going to be no recession. In fact, and I noticed my old crowd and some others are no longer forecasting a recession in Europe. So, mm. uh, and you see the same sort of thing in other parts of the world too. So, yes, of course, the US uh, might end up going into a recession if the Fed really puts the brakes on, but you guys probably spend all day every day debating it. The markets don't really believe that the Fed's going to keep doing what it said it's going to be doing. And that's another part of, of why I think there is some grounds for a bit. And I have to say, I'm slightly worried. I'm sounding such an optimist. I don't really. <laughs> there's, there's, there's mammoth issues structurally. But for this year, you know, I think there's quite a bit of evidence that the inflationary pressures are slowing more than people are talking about, inclu including the consensus at the Fed. Um, 
And as a very famous US macro investor once said to me, the only thing you know for sure about the Fed is when the evidence is changing in front of their eyes, they change what they say they're going to do. And, you know, I think that's quite a wise thing. But, you know, obviously, I think the next inflation read, I'm not sure when you guys have got it, it's coming pretty soon, right? I think that's going to be a, a really big thing for all global markets, uh, as will be the ongoing evidence of the speed of China's recovery and what's going on in commodity prices. But right. so far, it is remarkably benign, in my view. Well, uh, on that note, and a very positive note it is, uh, we thank you, Jim. Always good to I'll see probably you, sir. Go, I'll, I think I should go and have a lie down. And, <laughs> yeah, and I think you myself. should. Just take, take a little pressure off there. Good. Thanks so All much, right, my guys. friend. Bye -bye. Have a good evening. All right.